Here's the Raspberry Pi 3, Raspberry Pi 4, Raspberry Pi 5. Wait a second. Raspberry Pi 4? What's this? Uh, this is a CMOS battery. You know, it's like two antennas and a Sabrent 2230, 256 gig NVMe storage. What about this? Oh, this is a, a x86 processor. This is not the Raspberry Pi 4, but it looks like it. So full disclosure, this video is not a sponsor video. I just wanted to purchase the Rats X4 for myself because I think it's an interesting device. It's a small, you know, x86 in the same form factor essentially as the Raspberry Pi 4, but at the price of the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, for the 8 gig model version that I have, it's 80 US dollars at the time of this video, so it's essentially the same price. So I wanted to kind of compare the, you know, how it how the experience is with compared to Raspberry Pi. Of course, it's going to use a little more power consumption than the Raspberry Pi. So, you know, there's there's certain things that if you want if you favor power consumption overall, you probably want to stick with the Raspberry Pi. If you want better software compatibility cuz Almost everything runs on x86 hardware. You'd probably want to get the Ratza X4. Here's the Ratza X4 in its metal case that I got. It's basic fan metal case. It does help keep it a little bit cool. I use my own thermal pad as I'll show later because the one that came with it was junk and didn't really hold up very well. It's already damaged in shipping. So I got a better quality when I put on there. And I think it does help with thermals, but it still runs a little higher that temperature than you know most of the mini PCs I've tested out. But it still seems to stay in safe ranges. I haven't tested to see if it actually throttles you know, when I when I test this with OpenSense. But anyway, so you have the Wi-Fi antennas that are sticking off the back. You can attach this to the case somewhere, and like even this, you can you know put some sticky tape and probably put it up in the top of this case. I just have it dangling here for now uh, to show you. But you can see on the bottom, you can you can still have access to your the NVMe storage and the GPIO pin, and there's also the PoE header. You might be able to get away with you might be able to put the PoE hat on this in this case but that's going to be on the ground so it's not going to have much clearance so hopefully that would stay cool enough in there if you did the hat i want to get the hat at some point but it's not available in stock at the time of this video so at the end of this video i'm going to try setting up OpenSense on this with a single interface because i don't have any guides on how to set it up uh, a device with a single interface. You can use this with a PC or any device that only has one NIC in it. Of course, this situation is less than ideal because you're going to be sharing bandwidth on the same interface, so that's going to lower your throughput, especially when you're, you're downloading stuff, say, from the WAN interface. It's got to go through the WAN interface and the LAN interface, so that kind of almost like halves your bandwidth if, if depending on you know what how much you're downloading. And I want to show an example of how it compares if I use a 2.5 gig interface versus a one gig interface for the WAN connection or even a client device on the on the client side. So you need to have like all 2.5 gig interfaces if you want to try this to get maximum bandwidth in certain areas of your network. All right, so now we're booting up the RATSA and let's hit the delete key so we can enter the setup so we can select our boot device because by default, it's going to try to boot off of a disk, I believe. On the save and exit page down at the bottom, you can do boot override. So you can just select our USB drive down here at the bottom. And now we're going to get into the setup of OpenSense. Okay, so let's not push any key to continue because we don't want to import any configuration. We could run this from scratch and let it continue. All right, so now we want to do manual interface assignment. This is a more advanced configuration that we're going to be doing. I was going to show how to do this through the web interface, reassigning interfaces on a single interface. But I think this is the most straightforward way and the simplest way to do it because you know you kind of have to be careful how you do it in the web interface. You don't lock yourself out. So this will be the easiest way because we're, we're directly on the machine and we'll, we'll get all these interfaces configured. It's important to note right now that I don't have the RATSA connected to the network. I'm just using a keyboard and a screen connected to the RATSA. So I like configuring OpenSense first to show you how that works. Once we have all that stuff set up, all we have to do is just go and configure your network switch and then we can plug everything in and so we can log in. Okay. So let's do this. We're going, we're not going to configure lags. So hit no. We are going to do VLANs in this configuration. Normally I would do it in the web interface, but because the way we're doing a single interface, we need to define all of our interfaces now instead of later. So we hit yes. All right. You can see that we have one VLAN capable interface that's detected. So, which is what we are expecting. Now, so we want to enter the parent interface, so there's only one, so it's IGC0. And we're going to use the VLAN tag of 2 for our WAN interface, so let's do 2. 
So we're now we're going to create another VLAN because I'm just going to show you setting up just a single VLAN, but we're also going to have a LAN interface as well for the untagged traffic. So we're basically creating an OpenSense that's going to be exactly like a default installation, except we'll have one extra VLAN in there. We're going to create VLAN 10, so IGC 0 and VLAN 10. All right, so we'll just do hit enter to hit nothing. So we're going to continue on. So now you'll see we have IGC 0, VLAN 2, and VLAN 10. So now we need to select what we're going to use for the WAN interface, and that's going to be IGC 0, VLAN 2. So this, we have to type that out, so IGC 0, underscore, VLAN 2. So now we need to select what we're going to use for the LAN interface, and we're going to use the parent interface with no VLAN tags, because this will be for the untagged traffic, and this will be the LAN interface. This will be exactly how OpenSense is set up on a box that has two or more ports on it. So we'll type IGC 0. So now we have an optional interface that we can set up, which we will use for VLAN 10. And this will just be our single VLAN we're going to use for testing. I'm going to eventually call it IoT for IoT network, just to show you an example network you can set up. So let's do IGC 0. You can set up more uh, once you get the web interface up and running. But I just wanted to go ahead and show you how to set up a few of them ahead of time, just so you can see what that looks like. All right, so now we don't have any more interfaces left, and we just hit enter. So now you'll see we have a WAN interface, which is the VLAN 2, LAN interface, which is default LAN interface, and then we have op optional 1, which is our VLAN for IoT network. So we want to proceed. Yes. So now you'll see we have the LAN interface, which defaults to 192.168.1.1 uh, slash 24, which is what we expect. And then we have you know, the other two interfaces don't have anything to set up for them yet. WAN interface should automatically default to DHCP. If we had it plugged in into the network, it would show up there, but we can't really do that yet because we don't have the network switch configured. So it's not, we're not going to worry about that right now. So what we're going to do, we're just going to do a, a normal uh, OpenSense installation from this point on. So we just need to type in installer because we want to install. And then we do OpenSense as a password. And we'll just hit continue. We're going to do ZFS. And we're going to Z root. It says we already have a Z root on there because um, I, I already have an installation that I was testing with. We'll just do stripe because we only have one disk. We hit space bar to select the only disk we have. Hit OK. And we'll say yes. I already have a disk on there, uh, data on there. Who cares? Okay, so now it's just going to install it and we'll just wait until this finishes. So now we can enter a root password so we're not using the default password of OpenSense. So let's do root password, enter one in. All right, all right, then we just go to complete install. So OpenSense is booted up. I think I still think it's pretty cool that I'm installing OpenSense on a Raspberry Pi size computer, but since it's x86, we can install pretty much whatever we want on it, which is really awesome. So now that we have OpenSense configured, we're going to configure the network switch. And then after that, I will show you how I'm going to connect everything in and we'll see, we'll log in and see if we can get access to everything. So now let's do the network configuration to use a single interface. We got to get the VLAN set up properly. I'm going to be using the Seeker Store 2.5 10 gig network switch. I was going to use the uh, Grand Stream that I, that I just got recently, but I want to use the Seeker Store switch because I need several 2.5 gig uh, Ethernet interfaces to take full advantage of the bandwidth here. So uh, this will just be an example. Your network switch will vary unless you're using a similar network switch. So let's click log in here. All right. So let's go to the switching tab. And so now we're going to go to VLANs. And on this page, we can create our VLAN IDs and the name of the VLANs. We're going to create a VLAN for the WAN interface, and we're just going to create another VLAN just to be a sample VLAN that you're going to be configuring in OpenSense on the RATSA that we configured. So let's do VLAN 2 for the WAN interface. I'm just going to call it WAN. And we'll just hit add at the top here. And then we're going to create a VLAN ID of 10. And we're just going to call this, uh, you know, IoT. And we'll click add. And we're also going to be making use of the default VLAN of 1. But we don't need to add that because it's already in here. So that'll be our, our typical LAN interface that you would normally have on OpenSense. So I'm going to be leaving that the same. So we just need to have a WAN interface and IoT interface. I already have a lab one in here, but you can just ignore that because I, I was just already connected to my network. So we'll just leave it, leave it like that. So that's all we need to do for this portion. So let's go to the advanced page and then we'll go to VLAN membership because we want to set up the VLANs for these different ports. 
and you'll see that I have four interfaces that I can use here. The first one I'm using to manage this network switch on the default VLAN of one. So I don't want to mess with that first port. So we're gonna to go to VLAN ID of two up here at the top, and we'll make the second port VLAN two, which would be our WAN interface. We click it twice to make it a U for untagged. And then uh, the, the RATSA is gonna be connected to port three, and this has to have all of our tagged ports on it. So this is, we'll make that a T for tag so that that VLAN traffic can make it to the RATSA uh, for the OpenSense box, and we'll click apply. And then for VLAN 10, we're going to, oops, uh, for VLAN 10, we're gonna click 10. And then we'll also make port three a tagged port because that's where OpenSense will be connected. And then we'll make this untagged because we'll use port four as an example machine that we're connecting to a one of our VLANs on the OpenSense box to show you how you could configure VLANs, okay? So we'll just hit apply here. Okay, one thing I wanted to show you after setting the VLAN 2 and 10 is how I have my port PVID configuration set up because you may need to tweak some of this because by default it might set it to general, which might be okay. But I went ahead and set uh, all the ports that I'm using on a single VLAN like, like my lab network, which is 110, and the 2 and 10 that we just added. I set those to be access as the switch port mode. You may need to go and switch this to access port mode. And that way, the main thing is you need to make sure that the PVID is set to the you know two and ten on ports two and four and i'm using port one access to switch so it's gonna be set to one and then i have port three set to trunk and it's set to be you know have one on there as the default pvid which is the default vlan and that's what you would use for untagged traffic so you might want to have some of these things set this way the good thing about it is when you have this already set up as access which i already did when you go to the VLAN membership page, every time that you move it to a different VLAN or set a VLAN in there, notice on VLAN ID one, which is the default VLAN, ports two and four are automatically cleared out because they're no longer a part of the VLAN one. And this will happen automatically if you have you know, the switch port mode set up properly. Cause I think if you set it to the general or access, it might just leave it in the default VLAN in addition to the VLAN you selected. So that's something to keep in mind with this network switch. Other network switches, you may not necessarily have to do it that way. So here's my secret store switch. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using port one to manage this switch. And I'm using this Zima board down here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and connect that one first so you can see that's what I'm managing with. And down here, I have my RATSA. You can see it's on. And this is the single interface that is coming off the RATSA. I have another white cable that I wanna be using. I'm gonna use that in port three, okay? That's where it's gonna be managing this. I want to mention that this network switch is not connected to my network because I'm simulating that you're going to be controlling your network from this. So if you remember, port two is our WAN interface. We need to connect the WAN interface to here, which would be your modem. If you have a cable modem or an ONT, if you have fiber, you would connect in here just like you would your router. But because, because the RATS only has one interface, you, you can't plug your modem or ONT directly in here. So we have to create use this VLAN to be able to get the traffic over to here. So I'm going to simulate a WAN interface because this is plugged into my network on my lab network. And so I'm going to use this cable here. So this is going to be my simulated WAN connection. I'm going to plug it into port two. Okay. And this is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet interface, which is important. Okay. I wanted to mention that we need to have all three of these as 2.5 gigabit ethernet interfaces in order to take full advantage of the network speeds. Okay. Port four, I uh, configured it to be an IoT device. I'm going to use this device here to simulate a device on the IoT network. So this is going to be on our LAN network. This is our WAN interface. This is our connection to our RATSA, which has which all this traffic is going to be passing through. And then we have a device on the IoT network, and you can continue on with other ports and stuff as, as you see fit. Here's a physical connections diagram if you wanted to pause the video and take a look at it so you don't have to follow along with me being in my server closet. One thing to note, I just stuck a picture of a NAS for the IoT device, but I was actually using another computer to do some speed testing. But I just wanted to show an example of some random IoT device you might want to have on the IoT network. And here's a logical diagram showing all of the networks that we set up an OpenSense and on the network switch with the WAN, LAN, and IoT networks. 
Uh, the, the important thing to note is the LAN is the untagged default VLAN, which a lot of times in network switches, it, they call it VLAN 1. And we set up the other two VLANs that feed up into the RATSA, which has OpenSense installed. After logging in, to keep this video a little bit shorter, I went ahead and did a couple of steps. I'll just do a quick summary of it. I added the thermal sensors over here so you can see the temperature. I also finished configuring the interface. Let's go to interfaces and I renamed it to IoT. This was you know, optional one interface, OPT1. And I just renamed it to IoT in here and I gave it a static IP with the 192.168.10.1 network. And I configured in services, ISC, DHCP v4. I'm still using that because that's a default in OpenSense. Uh, I know Kia DHCP is out, but I'm just, it's easy just for me to do this this way. So I'm just, I just enabled this I, server on IoT network and made the range 100 to 199. And this hit save and we finished that. And then finally, this is the same steps you always do anytime you create a new interface. You have to, you have to, set the IP address ranges, and then you have to set the DHCP. And then finally, the firewall rules. If you go to rules, IOT, I just created an allow all rule disk for demonstration purposes. You'll want to restrict this further. I just did a copy from the LAN rule, basically allow all. So those three things I did so I can actually test this out. So what I'm going to do now is do some speed tests to demonstrate the performance of using a single interface. The interesting thing about sharing the same interface for the WAN, LAN, and other VLANs that you might have is that because the traffic has to come into the WAN interface and also on the other interfaces, you end up halving your bandwidth. If if you have a two, you know, 0.5 gigabit connection, internet connection, as a, for example, you should be only be able to get a half of that. But it's actually you end up getting a little bit more than half that, from what I can tell. But I'll show you in, in a demonstration here. If I just do this, I have gigabit cable internet from Comcast and they over provision a little bit so I can get about 1.2 to 1.3 gigabits at the most. As you can see here, it's gonna be we got 1.3 gigabits and that's about half of your 2.5 gigabit ethernet interface. So I can get my full throughput. If you have a gigabit connection, you pretty much get a full throughput. So I'm gonna swap the 2.5 gigabit uh, WAN connection with a one gigabit WAN connection on my network switch and I'll show that I end up getting almost half the performance of of this because of the fact that it has to travel through the same interface for the WAN and LAN connections and so let's do that real quick. I swapped that cable out instead of trying to like force the speed on the network switch it's easier just to swap it to a different port that's slower it's just an easy way to to demonstrate this concept so I'm wondering rerun this test and you'll see that I'm getting about 700 megabits, 7, 800 megabits. And that's almost exactly half of 1.3 gigabits. I was getting almost 1.4. So you can see it lowered my throughput, even though I have one gigabit, you know, internet connection and I have a 2.5 gigabit connection everywhere else it further reduces the bandwidth. So this is something to keep in mind. So that's one disadvantage of running all everything on a single interface. It works. You just have to be aware of it only works up to a certain point. I hope you found this throughput test interesting.